Hi, welcome to this section of cardiology. This is Dr. Jaitley. In this section, I'll be talking to you what are the grades of dyspnea and angina. Now, dyspnea is a shortness of breath, and angina is the chest pain that results from ischemia within the coronaries. Okay, so in general, dyspnea is normally the shortness of breath that results from the left ventricular dysfunction, as we talk about, or malfunction. That means either it is a systolic dysfunction or it's a diastolic dysfunction, like we've talked about, or it's a combination of systolic and diastolic heart failure, as we call it. Now, it's important for us to grade because that's one of the ways you can prognostically see these patients in the medical clinics or cardio cardiology clinics, if you will, because that will allow you to assess whether or not is the dyspnea stable, the angina stable, or is it progressive, or is it getting better, are they responding to the medication. So that is the whole idea of wanting to see if we can classify this. So the classification that's worldwide accepted is the New York Heart Association classification, uh, grades 1 to 4. Okay, so grade 1 is obviously minimal, so in other words, dyspnea on severe exertion. We are, we are talking about roughly 8 to 10 blocks when somebody walks on a flat surface and gets short of breath. Normally, you should not be short of breath even when you walk 10 blocks because, you know, your left ventricular function should be able to, you know, sustain well uh, for, you know, as long as you're walking on a flat surface because your, your METs uh, that you spend in terms of energy and the VO2, which is the amount of oxygen that is being utilized, per unit of your myocardium and or your tissue should balance out well with a New York Heart Association if there was a class zero ex existing. But class one implies that after eight to 10 blocks, you do get uh, short of breath very minimally, but that is a severe on severe exertion. Class two implying dyspnea on moderate exertion. That means anywhere walking between two to three blocks roughly and uh, New York Heart Association is class two. So that's on moderate exertion. Minimal exertion is implying that class three, that means on minimal exertion implying really like moving within the room, from room to room or going up to the balcony or walking up to the bathroom, for instance, getting out of bed and walking up to the TV or to your kitchen counter table, etc. So minimal exertion is that, like within the room or within the house, not even climbing stairs, just within the room, walking from one room to the other will give you a class three. We'll classify that as a dyspnea of class three. And a class four is obviously at rest, like you're sitting in the chair or sitting in bed or laying in bed. That's what makes you short of breath. So immediately you sit up. So it's called orthopnea also. That means dyspnea on laying down and now you're, you're short of breath while you're sitting as well. So that's orthopnea. Uh, so this is based on the New York Heart Association and it really signifies how the left ventricle is worsening from class 1 to class 4 and gives you an idea as to what this person or this patient is performing, whether or not prognostically. Is the disease worsening? Is the disease uh, getting control with the medication? Say if somebody presents with class 4, and like obviously class 4, these patients are admitted to the hospital because they are short of breath at rest. That's not good, meaningful life. So patient will have to be admitted diuretics and whatever else that have to be given will have to be given rather emergently in an ICU or CCU setting. And then these patients become, you know, minimally uh, short of breath and then they're discharged. Now remember, prognostically also the mortality is high and that has been classically seen like you could have an 80% mortality if somebody is in class 4 or you could have less than 20% mortality when you have class 1 type of heart failure. Now, this, these are just rough ball mark, ballparks, so one can really ascertain that left ventricle is deteriorating or not deteriorating depending upon the medical therapy that's being offered or the treatment that's being uh, continued. Canadian Cardiovascular Society came out with similar, slightly modified uh, uh, angina pectoris classification, and they deal with CCS 1 through 4, similarly like NYHA class 1 through 4, and here, like on the right panel, the coronaries are noted to cause the ischemia because of the plaques or the obstructions that develop between the right and the left coronary. Now, sure, obviously, the Canadian classification S1, the CCS1 as they call it, or Canadian Cardiovascular Society, uh, class 1, angina pectoris and severe exertion. That means, again, you're walking 8 to 10 blocks and not getting chest pain or angina pectoris, but now you're starting to feel that, and that's class one. Class two is when it's on moderate exertion, walking 
uh, two to three blocks itself brings about the angina picture. Now that is considered as crescendo angina. Say somebody had class one and now is starting to get uh, chest pain at walking two blocks or even walking minimally like within the room, within the house, for instance. Similar classification, just like New York Heart Association class three. This is CCS3, the equivalent of angina and dyspnea here. The angina that means occurring at minimal dis minimal exertion is not a meaningful life, so that immediately has to be ascertained and bring the patient to the hospital. So, I mean, class one and two, you can still conceivably manage as, you know, as, as an outpatient, but class three and four will have to be managed in the hospital because this is rather almost an unstable angina you're getting at this level. And uns classic class four is where angina pectoris is addressed. That means patient just gets chest pain continuously at rest, even on minimal uh, or no exertion. So that is considered as angina at rest, and that is class four. So this is unstable angina, obviously, and requires an emergency uh, admission to the hospital. So uh, in a nutshell, it's a crescendo angina uh, as it progresses from one through four and changing patterns of angina based on your exertions. That itself classifies it as unstable angina. Sometimes a change in pattern of chest pain, like radiation is now occurring, or more severity, or a patient says, well, now it's also causing accompanying symptoms like shortness of breath, dizziness, profuse sweating. So accompanying symptoms, that also puts you into a category of unstable angina. So all of these symptoms will have to be analyzed, not just based on exertion alone or the classes I've pointed out here, but the accompanying symptoms that angina is accompanied with or is, uh, is seen with, very importantly. Okay, so New York Heart Association for Dyspnea and Canadian Cardiovascular Society for Angina. Hope you enjoyed this section. Talk to you again soon. Thanks for your attention. Bye.